I'll read them and make sure they're all right. Right, shall we get on? Yeah. We're ready, everybody. You okay? Yeah, fine. But of course, we didn't know what we looked like from the outside, so we had a ball, and it's you know not all of it, but a lots lots of it just felt like a ball, and we just looked like the most chaotic social mess to the neighbours, the police, the social workers, and we were just too big to get hold of. And um, and and I've got this fantastic memory of being persuaded by my elder sister, who was by that point our mum. Uh, to take the next day off school, your parent effectively persuading you to turn, um, just so we could redecorate the house overnight because there were so many of us. And we repainted the house all, uh, you know, from, from like 10 o'clock at night until 6 in the morning. We redecorated the entire house. And you go, oh, wow, that's really empowering. And, and there were loads of good things that came out of it. Every day there was a scrap in the house. You know, it was like get, losing a tooth was, you know, kind of weekly. Uh, uh, event for somebody, and there were so many people in the house, and you, you were just scrapping to get to the cooker, you scrapped to get to the, you know, get your hair washed and stuff like that. And because there were six boys, you know, it was like you all wanted to get out to get laid after school, so you wanted to be the first to eat clean, you know, and do your ablutions and get out. But I was the smallest, so you just got kicked to the back. The person it built in me uh, was someone who was constantly striving to fix things. I was always a fixer. I, would always, I could always find money. I could always get jobs, and and um, you know I was I was academically uh, fairly achieved within the family, so I could fake insurance claims and stuff like that. You know I did it fairly effectively, and um, <clears throat> um, and it it built a real survivor in me, and I think that that's lasted me forever. And we were such a young family. You know, bear in mind my sister was only sixteen and nine months pregnant and running all these kids, and we didn't have money, and, and she had enough on her plate. And I, I started to hit the wall um, in a really bad psychological position. And was, there were just too many people around for that to be noticed. It wasn't that kind of family. It wasn't that anybody was treating you badly. It's just that there was too much going on to really credibly um, spot a psychological disorder. And, and so... I, 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 I hit that for about two years before it popped, and, uh, and I was really quite dark and extremely suicidal. And basically all I was trying to do, I, I, I kind of been given the asset of, of being trained to be a survivor, but my own mind then was turning it inside out. I was just, and I became really anti-self-aggressive. And, um, and, and it was, the real shame of it was that it was treatable it was eminently treatable in the first six months, but it took two years before, and I had to pop visibly um, before you'd get help. And I remember knowing internally that I needed help and wrote to social services and asked to be taken into care, and it got completely ignored. So as a kid, to have done that at 13 or 14, it was a really big deal. The social workers just ignored it, and it was just like, it's, it's too big to, be, to take the whole family on. And so they kind of stayed, they really stayed away from us. I attempted suicide, and and uh, and when I was admitted to casualty, uh, it was a really weird, weird period because I was released from hospital after the attempt. You know, as a kind of silly lad, and because it was coming up to, it was getting into O level time. They kind of they just. And it was like a charge nurse in a casualty department tells me psychologically what's wrong with me. Oh, it'll be your exams. Go home. And then, and so I'm sent back into the absolute turmoil of home, um, and desperate not to be there, knowing I needed to be somewhere else. I mean, and every, all the time I'm admitting that by behaviour patterns, and um, and I kind of got put back, and it was just the worst six months of my. I, no, it was about three months, and so I attempted suicide again, and that's when I got sectioned. The name Abbott was a bad name. And, you know, the police didn't want to go anywhere near it. Social workers just didn't want to take it on. So there was a real kind of no-go uh, uh, policy around the family. And I'd, I'd shown to for two-thirds of one year. And ordinarily, in any other family, that would be followed up. Because I, I was raped when I was 11. And, um, and of course, you know, it was, one of the, it was one of the things that you could not tell the family. 
well, you didn't want to anyway. I mean, it's such a personal thing, you know, for, for a male uh, to admit to. But had I done that, then at a time when the family was actually getting quite sturdy, uh, we would have been, the police would have descended, the whole family orbit would have been looked at professionally. And we weren't fit to be left on our own, was the truth. Um, so I didn't, I never reported that. And that was, th that was the main trigger, apart from both parents having deserted uh, after that was when I got raped and, and couldn't talk about it, couldn't tell anybody. You know, from 11 to 15 is a long time to kind of hang on to that kind of stuff, but that is what I did. And, and, and so all the problems kind of mashed in to this really deep, dark uh, kind of psychological, uh, it was like a really cold pond to sit in. And that's all I remember for, you know, it's like two years, it just went, um, I really didn't want to live. But self-harming patterns were kicking in, and they weren't noticed. And, and the whole point of self-harming is kind of to hide it, to be seen, to be found. And 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 and, and it wasn't because it wasn't. Um, I think it was inconceivable in a family that's just trying to stay in one place, you know, because in our house, unless you were screaming, you weren't even heard. Being taken in there was just about. Uh, that's one of the worst things I can ever remember, and being because it was socially, um, I, you know, it, you're a pariah the minute you know you, you refer to as a ward niner, and it was just when I went in, it was it was just the most bizarre, most extreme, most uh, terrifying collection of people I'd ever been put in front of, and um, because they had a grammar that that was about helping, helping each other and, and they start talking about helping you and I just, just, I just don't want to talk to people like you and of course you are people like them. It was an adult unit, there were no paediatric services in, in Burnley at that time so you were kind of chucked in with just about anybody who had a problem so it was like drug addicts, alcoholics, uh, extreme schizophrenics and you know the, it was the acute ward so you know it was kind of it was the bedlam of Burnley and um, after two days I just sat there thinking I'm in exactly the right place. And just looking at people going, oh my god, oh my god, I just, I know I'll get help now. I know I can go on from here. Because, you know, on the first day, I just, all the more just didn't want to be on this earth. Because actually, this is where I'd ended up. This is now going to define me. And on the second day, I just kind of looked around. And you just realised how many people were just there for the same reasons. And, and I felt really strong. Even though it took, it took two years, I remember that was the first day of a journey that I subscribed to, it had my consent from that day. And so, you know, it, was, it wasn't about them doing things to me, it was about us doing things for me. And it was a really grown up way to feel, and it was the most empowering thing I've ever felt, because up to, up to that point, I was, at that age, you're a reactive unit, aren't you? You know, you're told what to do, you're governed by school rules and, and stuff like that. And in there, you were allowed to uh, comment and contribute on, to your own treatment. And not that they were, you know, it wasn't a, a hippie camp. It was a really hardcore uh, chemical psychiatric unit. So, you know, they used kind of uh, log act or and, and, um, and truth serum, as they kept referring to it. Who wants a truth serum? If, if they hadn't called it that, I'd have been fine. And basically it was just, you know, it's start talking, mate. And, um, and so, yeah, I did that for uh, 28 days and then stayed voluntarily for a year as uh, a day patient. And I knew it would take a long time, but, um, and I knew that I would go out a different person, which nobody wants to be. You don't want to be a person you can't vote for, but I knew I'd have to become someone else to feel less pain.